Hello everyone, you are welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be discussing an interesting topic, toxoplasmosis. What is toxoplasmosis? Toxoplasmosis is a zoonotic protozoan parasitic disease that affects humans and animals. And toxoplasmosis can be caused by an obligate intracellular apicomplexan parasite known as toxoplasma gondii. It is an intestinal coccidium parasite that infects the felidae family, particularly domesticated cats. The life cycle of Toxoplasma gondii oscillates between the definitive host and intermediate host. What are the definitive hosts? They are members of the Felidae family, particularly domesticated cat, while the intermediate hosts are warm-blooded mammals, including humans. Infected cats are known to shed unsporulated oocysts in their in their feces. Now these unsporulated oocysts will require one to five days to develop into uh, what is called the infective sporulated oocysts, which can be found in the soil um, and plant vegetation. When rats and birds have contact with this plant material or soil particles in the process of uh, feeding, they ingest the sporulated oocysts. And in their tissues, they become the slow-growing bradyzoids. And when the flesh of these animals are eaten by the definitive host, then the bradyzoids or the tissue cysts uh, released in the intestine of the definitive host, the cat. That circle is completed. The other part of the circle concerns humans. Now humans can become infected with Toxoplasma gondii in four ways. The first is through food animals here. Yeah? We'll have the pig and the sheep, which can be become infected by ingesting the sporulate, uh, sporulated oocysts. Now, when the flesh of these animals are eaten raw or undercooked by humans, they become infected. The third, the second way by which humans become infected is through contaminated water and contaminated raw vegetables, such as salad vegetables, cabbage, carrots, tomatoes. And so by consuming these or um, unwashed vegetables raw, humans become infected. The third route of infection is by blood transfusion or through organ transplants. Now, 
the fourth route of transmission to humans is by vertical transmission of Toxoplasma going to die from an infected mother to her unborn uh, fetus. This completes the life cycle of Toxoplasma going to die. There are five infection categories of Toxoplasmosis. These include those acquired congenitally. These are uh, refers to congenital uh, toxoplasmosis. Then those acquired by or reactivated in immunodeficient or immunocompromised patients such as HIV patients. Uh, and then those acquired by immunocompetent patients. Uh, then those acquired during pregnancy and then ocular infections. We'll look at the clinical manifestations of toxoplasmosis. The first one, congenital toxoplasmosis, this occurs in the unborn fetus or rather the newborn. And this includes the following. Uh, the typical clinical syndrome of toxoplasmosis are microcephaly, the head is small, um, Coloretinitis, intracranial calcifications, hydrocephaly, fluid has collected uh, in the head, convulsions, and psychomotor disturbances. Of these clinical manifestations, there are three important uh, ones known as the classical trait. These include hydrocephaly, retinitis, and intracranial calcifications. The most serious uh, manifestations of congenital toxoplasmosis are the neurologic and ophthalmic disabilities. Congenital toxoplasmosis can result in miscarriages, spontaneous abortion, prematurity, and stillbirth. Then you also have, apart from congenital toxoplasmosis, you also have cerebral toxoplasmosis or neurotoxoplasmosis or toxoplasmic encephalitis, which can occur in the, uh, in the immunocompromised individuals, such as H HIV uh, patients and organ transplant recipients. If it's not treated early, it can result in death of the infected person. Three, you have ocular toxoplasmosis. And let's quickly look at the diagnosis of toxoplasmosis, mainly one through serological test. This will involve the use of the double sandwich IgM ELISA or IgG ELISA. Uh, ELISA means enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Also, the Sabine Feldman diet test can also be used. Um, you have the PCR, which is the polymerase chain reaction, and this involves the amplification of specific nucleic acid sequences. But um, more importantly, the quantitative polymerase chain reaction will be preferred, targeting the rep 5 to 9 sequence. You will have the CT scan, which is computerized tomography scan, can also be used. It will show the abnormalities in the brain tissues. And then recently, you have the novel rapid detection assay, which is a recombinase aided amplification with lateral flow dipstick coupled with Krebs cas 13A fluorescence. How do we prevent and control toxoplasmosis? One will have the use of 
chemotherapy, sulfonamides, and perimetamine are two important drugs that are used to treat toxoplasmosis in humans. Uh, live vaccine is available in some countries, but most importantly, preventive measures will be better, which will involve the thorough cooking of meat. Humans should not eat undercooked meat or raw uh, um, meat. And for women, particularly pregnant women, they should avoid tasting of meat while cooking. For God's sake, it's either is thoroughly cooked after 30 minutes or it's not cooked. There's no point tasting meat halfway because of the risk of contracting toxoplasmosis. Then hands should be washed with soap and water after handling meat. Raw or undercooked meat should never be fed to cats because that is the source of the tissue cyst, the bradysoids to cats. Litter boxes must be cleaned and changed every day. The litter boxes that is where the kittens and the cat, mother cat, are kept in the house. Anybody handling the litter boxes and uh, the kittens and the mother cat must wash his or her hand properly. Gloves must be used while working in the garden because um, cat feces um, may be past and present in the soil. Cats are very discreet in when it comes to defecation and uh, may not be possible for the person involved in gardening to see the cat feces. Again, HIV patients should be treated with other immunocompromised uh, um, individuals. These are some of the links for further reading. If this video has added knowledge or has given you information about this important foodborne um, disease, please share, like, and subscribe to my YouTube uh, channel. Thank you for listening.